Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and yep, yeah, it's Jelly Plate Playtime. Now, um, as I said in the introduction video, I want to keep these to an hour, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my timer for one hour, because I can get completely and utterly lost in Jelly Plate printing, and I will say when the hour's up, we'll do a quick roundup, and then we're done. Um, don't forget guys, this isn't a tutorial. I'm not an expert at this. I've just done it for a while. I never really enjoy the process. And to be honest with you, this is just me having a play and you said you wanted to see as I do them. So you know what, you're just coming along. We'll have a chat. I'll show you some products, show you some techniques. And as my skills in this evolve, hopefully your learning of it will also evolve. So right, let's chat. Let's tell me what we're doing. So I've got some white card here, 12 by 12. I could be using the back of 12 by 12 paper pads, which we might do in the future because I don't always print onto this stuff. Um, this is the company I got these from, and that's a GSM. I don't normally do 250 GSM, but this was a good deal, so I bought them anyway. Um, I've got other things around to stamp on, print on, do anything on. We'll see them as I bring them into shop. I've got my small jelly plate here, which I use as a palette, but not always, but it's there. This is a 12 by 12 jelly plate, which is my one of choice. There are definitely different sizes and shapes out there. I love this one the best because I will make, let's show you, I will make 12 by 12s and then I will cut them down into the size I need, whether they're for journal covers, ephemera, or whatever they may turn out to be. Another thing I really like to do, and you'll see me do it in nearly every video I do, is I like labels. So what I do is these are just normal Avery labels. Um, any other brand will work, obviously. I buy Avery labels. If they're on sale in my stationery store, I buy as many as I can. Because what I tend to do is I tend to use them as clean-up sheets. So I will make labels out of them, and then these labels I'll use in my junk journals. I'll use them in my... Um, my planner, my planner normally is where a lot of these go and I just literally, these are my clean up sheets and I just, I love the labels. So I have had a request in the, I love that one, that one really worked. Um, I have had a request in the past whether I'd make a digital of my labels. I'm not sure yet. I'm having trouble with Adobe Photoshop currently and have been for a while. I need to sort that out before I can do anything like that. So. We're not going to go into colour theory or anything. I'm just going to start this because I believe this is the first in the jelly print, pr print play. And I want to just get on with it and do it. So we're going to make some backgrounds. So I want to make some background colours before I make backgrounds. So I think I'm going to use orange. I'm going to use that sort of colour red. And let's put a little bit of another colour in there. Um, Let's see, let's use a bit of yellow as well. So I try to stick with warm colours or dark colours, but not necessarily. Okay, so I'm not, you can put these directly onto your plate. I like to use, I call this my palette. So I like to just put some paints on there and take it from there onto there. Purely because I know that I'm a bit heavy handed with my paints. I'm sorry, if I shake... If I shake the camera when I shake the bottle, that's not intentional. It's just I'm in a room with wooden floorboards and obviously if I shake, it shakes. Now, the paints I'm using can be any viscosity, whether it's a liquid one or a thicker one. Some of the paints that I don't actually tell you what they are, like, like this bottle, for instance. This is basically an empty bottle and when I get into the ends of bottles, I put them all into one bottle. It's just easier than trying to battle everything. So I'm going to come in, I'm just going to brayer and I'm sort of just skimming over the top of this to pick up the colour and I just want to put some colour down. Now, I don't want to over brayer this because I don't want the entire thing to be blended together. I'm looking for something that is just literally a background. Now, I feel a bit awkward doing this because I've got an iPad directly above this. I would normally look down when I was doing this, but that ain't going to work today. So, and it's just a new way of working for me. So if I feel or sound a little awkward, that's probably the reason why. So, and I'm just going to roll that off. Now, this little bit here, I'm going to leave it here because I might add it to the next one. So I'm just going to bring in a piece of that 12 by 12. I usually just eyeball to one of the edges. I'm not that pedantic that actually everything has to be perfectly lined up. And I give it a smooth down with my hand. Um, am I worried that I've got it on this side? No, 
this is art. Art can be messy. If I was going to make this into a journal cover, which I do make my art into journal covers and planner covers, I'd have a backing on this anyway. So just pick this up, come to me and gently pull this back. I say gently only because I don't want my jelly mat moving all over the place. And right, that's a really good start. Now I normally film in natural daylight, which I am. There's a window by there. So you're seeing what I'm seeing, hopefully in the colors I'm seeing them. So that gets put to one side. Right, I quite like a bit of this color and I'm just gonna add a little bit extra of that onto this here for no other reason than I've got it. And then I'm just gonna move this up I'm going to bring in one of those label sheets and I'm just going to come in and just basically put some colour on this page. Because remember, this doesn't have to look like one big coherent piece. This just looks like um, only the sides of the labels you pull out of eventually. So this is another way I clean up my brace. So that will get built on as we go along. Let's put that to one side. Let's bring back in the jelly plate. Hopefully I'm staying in shot for everything. Right, we've done red, let's do some blues, right. Um, that's a nice colour. It's a Diane Reevely colour, I love that colour. And a paler blue. Um, let's hit a bit of turquoise as well. Is that turquoise? Bahama blue, hmm, there you go. So, right. So just to prove a point, I'm going to do this directly on here, just so you can see that it doesn't have to always be on the palette, which is what I call this. It's just my way of working because, as I said, I do tend to be a little bit heavy handed with my paint and I have a habit of putting far too much on the jelly plate where that's unnecessary, um, especially when it comes to some of the other techniques. Right, so just put that on there. So I'm just going to come in. If I'm brayering it, I tend to brayer the lighter colours first because then that doesn't muddy up the other stuff but eventually it's all going to be brayed in anyway. So I like the whole, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Um, the whole, oh, what is the word? Who is it? Um, I can't remember the name of the artist who did it. The one who actually painted, oh, I don't need a hair in there. Didn't come out there. Um, the one who painted water lilies. That's what that reminds me of. Now I'm gently, gently rolling off the top. If you press down, you will get lines. If you just press down gently, you will. Right, I'm going to come over to, I'm going to be over here. I'm just going to roll this brayer off onto the other piece of label paper, just to make sure it's nicely done. I'm hoping to end up with three sets of labels, five sets of um, backgrounds, and whatever else eventuates as we go along. As I said, I have bought a couple of new things in preparation for doing this, which once we've got the backgrounds done, I can show you. So again, lift that off. Ooh, that's nice. I'm loving that. Right, that will go to one side. So we did blues. We've done reds and oranges. Let's pull in a couple of greens. Actually, let's just pull in green. So I'm going to use um, this. This is a mixed bottle. As I said, what I tend to do is as I'm coming to the end of tubes or bottles, I decant them into one. So I end up with a mixture of colours in the same bottle. Doesn't bother me. I'm not supported by any particular brand. I'm not promoting or um, sharing any particular company. I'm just having fun with this and that's the important thing for me, and I think that's the important thing we need to remember when we're doing art. We're having fun. So I've seen quite a few of you in previous comments have said that you did buy a jelly plate a long time ago and you used it once or twice, weren't happy with the results, and it's been sat in a cupboard. And I've seen one or two other of you in the comments have actually said to me, um, You've just ordered a jelly plate and you're really looking forward to this series. So I'm hoping not to disappoint, basically. As I said, I'm a guy having a go and I, I love my jelly plate. I don't love it when I've got hairs in it. Where's all this hair coming from? I'm bald for goodness sake. Where's that come from? Right, another bit onto that label. The labels will be kind of a surprise at the end of this. Okay, so I put a relatively thin layer on now. The way jelly plates work is if you've got anything dry on your jelly plate, 
when you put a wet load on the top, the wet load will reactivate the one underneath and when you pull it off, it should pull it all off together. So, mind you, with all of the talking I'm doing, um, if the layer dries and you'll find some paints dry quicker than others, uh, you may find it may not all lift off, but the grunge that builds up on your jelly plate can sometimes be the most interesting stuff you end up with on your jelly plate. I feel like I've got a bubble under there. So pull this one off and see what lifts off with this one. Okay, so there's a prime example and I'm loving that. So what that covering did is it pulled up all of the bits from the previous bits. And that's what we're looking for. I mean, that on its own is beautiful. That That is visual texture. That's what I'm looking to create. So that's another one done. Right, what do I want to do with this? I quite like this. So let's put, put a bit of this in the corner. I've got an idea for this. Where's this hair coming from? I don't know if it's the same hair all over the place or it's it's different hairs. Maybe it's off it's off a cloth or something I actually cleaned up my jelly plate with. So right. Um I've got green. I think I'd like to put some sort of terracotta or tannish colour down now. Maybe a bit of, this is another one of those where I've just been adding paints to it. I'm just gonna put this one directly on here. I don't want a thin, a thick coat. There are times for thick coats on your jelly plate. Um, I know some people put loads on their jelly plate. I know some people put less on their jelly plates. It's completely up to you what you do with your jelly plate. I'm not going to say it's a right or wrong. I am still learning. I've seen some fabulous jelly plate work over the time. Um, there are people out there who do absolutely miraculous things mono printing and I love it absolutely love it so this one I'm expecting to be pretty much all that brown color I'd be surprised if there's much variation but then who knows what's going to get picked up off my jelly plate that's got that bit of a rub let's lift this one up and see what's come up with this oh I've still got some on there there you go, see, so still picking up pieces. Loving that, that's not a problem. I like the vibrancy of that. Right, I think I'm going to just line that back up again, just so it's, it doesn't have to be square, it just happens to be me. I'm actually going to lift up my palette one and just lay that on, and it'll just take some of the color off this so I don't waste the paint. I'm just putting it across. So there you go. Now I think what I want to do is I want to come in and just on this last one, I'm just going to do a layer of a really light colour. Um, let's have a look. This yellow is quite nice, it's quite a pale colour. And I'm just going to give it a pale colour just to lift off everything on there. Then when we, we will have then done our five starting points, should we call it. And then we'll start playing around and make some interesting visual backgrounds I hope. Now that's another thing by the way, this may work, this may not work. Don't, don't think every time you do a piece you're going to create a masterpiece. You certainly are not. I have more duds than I have good things but what I do is the duds can always be turned around and turned into something else. Like if you don't like the layer you've just put down, put another layer on top of it. That's the way I think. So I'll put a layer of that onto my labels. There's the labels gone. So I love the labels when they're done. Okay, that doesn't bother me. We'll clean that up actually and put it onto the clean up mat. I very rarely um, clean my jelly plates between using them. I literally just pick them up, put them down. Right, I'm talking and ignoring that. That's not a good idea. Let's just put that on there. So this will give us our five backgrounds. Anyway, let's lift this one up. And I've got something exciting I want to do that I actually saw someone else do this week and I'm like, ooh, I've got to have a go at that. So I'll explain that in a moment. Actually, it might be one of the next things I do. Okay, even that was just yellow, but look at what that's produced. Loving it. So, right, this was the first one we did. So, right, that's got 
a bit of gunge on it from my board. It's all visual texture. So I want to add something to that. Now for me, blue, that's lovely. It's almost ocean, but now that that's dry, I could maybe add a bit of green. I could add some stenciling. I could add some detail. I could add texture. I could go in more whatever I want at this point. Um, and that's usually where tissue paper comes in, right? I want to go a little bit lighter. And I quite like this color. Um, and I'm gonna do some of this, and I think I'm gonna put this directly on here because I want to put some white on this side and sort of blend it across where well, I put the white. Um, if you do this, by the way, and you're buying paint, always buy the biggest container of white. You will go through so much white. You truly will go through so much white. Okay, I'm gonna put white on this side and you'll note I make sure this is brayed first not to contaminate it with the green. When I put the green on, I work on this side and then I try to work in the middle to blend them across. If I was to add this brayer to this side, I obviously wouldn't have a blend anymore. I'd have all different shades of green. So just be aware that when you're doing this, if you do want to rebrayer this side, you have to clean off your brayer and then come in from this end again. Okay, so there you go. Just a little brayering 101. Got that on there. Now I want to put on here um, some numbers. I've decided I quite like numbers. Now, if you want your numbers to be this way up, you need to put them backwards on your piece. So I'm going to lay that by there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in with another one as well. So I've got this one. This is a new buy for me. I haven't used this one before, so I'm excited with that. Let's pop that down there. So um, Let's just leave that bit as it is. Uh, or can I? Wonder whether I can. I've got this stencil. As you can see, my stencils are well, well loved. I tend not to wash them between uses. I just use them. So let's grab a piece of tissue. This is just gift wrap tissue. Um, I use it quite often because when I use this, I can use this then for collage work or um, elements within a journal. So I'm just grabbing that. Hopefully I was in shot for all of that. And I'm going to lay this over the top. And this is purely here for me to be able to pull out all of those bits within the stencil. Now I'm pressing down gently with my fingertips and the pads of my fingers are going into the apertures of the stencil. And I'm doing that so that when I pull this off, if I haven't left this too long, because sometimes if you leave it too long, the paper tears. I'm hoping it doesn't, but I have been talking quite a bit. So normally I'm on my own when I do this, so I don't usually have a lot of chat time. So I'll pull that off and then I'm just going to peel this back. And what that's done is it's just given me an interesting piece. Now I will, I will build on this as we go along. So that's another one that's going to go on the floor. Now when these come off here, I can lay them on something else and stamp them or just clean them up. So I'm just going to pull them off. And I'm going to put this on my clean up mat and just roll it over the back. And that will just get that off. It's going to be dry in no time whatsoever, so I'm not worried about it. If I really wanted to be precious with my stencils, I'd have a bucket of water or a bowl of water and just drop them directly into that. But a stencil is a stencil. It's, it's a tool and I use it. So my thing is the more layers of paint I've got on there, the more that I'm likely to be able to extend the longevity of it all. Because what happens is... Um, the layers build up and that makes my stencil stronger. Right, I'm just going to lay this on top. Now, I don't expect to be able to pull an entire page off this because um, the paint has been drying slightly. And if it dries, it would rather stick to the, the jelly plate than it would actually to the thing I'm putting on top of it. But that also doesn't bother me. OK, I like that. I like that there. Again, there's going to be more coming off on this. As I've got this one on here, let's see whether I get another pull. Can you use the yellow one? Just lay it on top. This is what I know as a ghost print. Um, sometimes you get stuff off. Sometimes you don't get stuff off. It's literally, it's taking any little bits that didn't come off on the first pull. A pull is when you pull uh, the medium you're printing onto 
off the page. There goes, as I said, I didn't expect to get much. I've got a little bit of that there. That's okay, that's a little bit of visual texture. So let's go on, let's pull in. I'm gonna pull in the green one now, I think. Right, what goes, we had green and brown on that one. I think I'd like a little bit of red on this, um, just to pull up this area here. Um, that's a bit Christmas red, isn't it? Let's go with this color red. What is this? This is Tuscan red. It's a bright red, but it's not hugely bright. Now what I'm going to do is I'm only going to brayer this section because if I brayer all of it, it just means I'm recoloring the whole of my background again. So, and I want a thin coat. The secret to lifting stuff off a jelly plate, if you're trying to retrieve a ghost print, is actually to do a thin coat and move relatively quickly. Because what it will do, it will reactivate the paint underneath it. And you'll be able to lift it off. Depending on your climate, some climate is harder than others. We know that. So I'm going to stick that on top. And give that a bit of a press down. Now, as that's being pressed down by my hand, that's fine. I'm going to come in, I'm going to take some of this paint off here. And just add it to some of my labels. Which are looking quite nice, actually. So what did we manage to pull off here this time? I'm hoping for the outlines of those numbers. And I've got the outlines of those numbers. There you go. So they're the correct way round now, but they're really faint in the background. And that's what I'm looking. I'm looking for, um, I've said the word ghost, but I'm looking for a gentle outline in the background. This doesn't bother me because I know there's more going to be over the top of that. So let's pull in the bright red one now. Well, this is a very fluorescent one, isn't it? So I want to calm that down a bit. I'm loving it, but not as much as that. Um, I'm going to bring in a bit of brown. I'm going to go directly on the plate this time. With a dot of it. I'm going to put a bit of yellow into this. and I'm going to, So I'm basically going darker middle light. So Just a bit of that. It's almost like a buttermilk colour. Um, it's a combination of other colours, so I can't actually say what it is. It just ended up that way. So I'm going to come in and have a little think. I'm going to brayer my lightest colour. Then I'm going to come into the creamish colour. Now I'm picking up a bit of pink off the brayer. That's not a problem at all. So I'm working in a vertical action. If I was to do this, I would contaminate. So I'm just going to take that off there and come down here a bit just to work the blend across a bit. So there you go. Now do I want to put something on there? Um, I think I just want to do a regular pull actually. Oh no, wait a minute. Right. I've got this. This is a texture sheet. So I'm just going to come in. I'm going to lay this in this corner. This actually is made for cake decorating. Um, but anything with texture works. So you've seen in the video these things. So this is what I'm doing. Just going to pull that off there. I'm going to lay that on top of my label sheet and just lay it on there for the second. And I just knock them all on top. I like that, what that's done. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to work on lifting that off. Again, bits will always stick to the plate unless I'm doing a real final pull and then we're okay with all of that. There you go. So I've got a hint of it in there. In hindsight, I should probably have done that in a darker colour. And maybe we'll do that in a darker colour later on. But there are bits of it here which I really quite like as well. Actually, let's see if I can take it up with the yellow one. Because that should lift off nicely onto here. I need a little bit of white on there just to pull that off. Just a hint of. Not a huge amount. Just because I just want that bit there lifted off. I don't really want to get rid of the other colour I've already got. Let's uh, have this so that it blends across. So I've got the original colour over here. There you go. Bring that in. Lay that down. So this is how I do it, guys. I just I just play. As I said, 
I can lose hours and hours jelly plate printing. It's really addictive. So, and you never know what you're going to get. And I think that's what I really love about this technique is you just don't know. See, loving that already. That's just absolutely beautiful down there. So let's put that to one side. Right, we've got the orange one now. Now I think this needs a bit of drama. So let's have a think. What would be opposite on the colour wheel to orange? Um, yellow is purple. I mean, in one of my videos, we'll actually bring in a colour wheel and show you how I work these things out. But I think I actually want to just go for this. Um, actually, why don't we use a metallic? That'd be cool. Right. Um, let's use a gold. I've got these um, Amsterdam acrylics that are metallic. So I'm going to put this directly on here again. So we're there. Now I find metallics take a bit more brayering than normal. I mean, I find that they don't s spread as much as other paints do. And you'll sometimes not get a really good effect with them. You're just looking to get something that lays in the background. Off you come. So there you go, that's that. So, as I said, I'm not looking for a, a really heavy look to this. This is really meant to be a light hint of gold in the background. Just catches the eye. So I've got it. I can, can you see that? That's what I like. So when you move the page, you see the hint of in there. We'll be using darker colors shortly anyway. So, right, I think it's clean up time. So I'm gonna clean off my roller onto my mat. Another one of those hairs. Clean off my brayer onto my mat. This needs a good clean as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one of those these which is the thinner version it's a line across it anyway and i'm going to do what i call the clean pull which means i'm just going to use white i'm going to use it to clean this and then i'm going to use it to clean that so i'm just going to come in get that on my brayer and just work it so how can there be a long hair oh it's not a long hair griffiths it's a bubble so as you can see, the paint will lift off once you put another paint on top of it. So just trying to get myself a nice clean area here. This should pick up everything that's already on this plate because it's a nice thin coat. And then I will do that in a moment because this is my priority. Right, let's just lay... Lay that on there, give it a bit of smooth down so that can cook, should we say. I'm then going to take my bit of scrap paper, lay it on here and give it a bit of a smooth. I might even bray on the back of it just to make sure it's fully in contact with my little jelly plate. So, see, it's just lifted off stuff, which is fine. And I quite like that. That's interesting. I could just be using this size um, for making tags and stuff like that. So don't think you always have to have a large jelly plate. You do not. I like my little ones as well. See, just a bit more, but it's all visual texture. I oh, should put it on that one, actually. So, right, we've got this on here. Let's see whether we've cleaned, cleaned the plate off. As I said, this is purely just cleaning the plate off. And this shows you a problem I have with the thinner cardstock is sometimes I get that in the middle, but this is a clean off sheet and that's totally fine. So we can start again. Right. Now I wanted to do something I saw someone do. So I'm really excited to give this a go. So I need to choose a color that I want to do it on. Um, let's go on to, let's do this one, okay? I don't know why this is, I love this bit, not in love with that bit. So let's just change it all. Um, right, what color do I want? I want something with a bit of warmth in it. Um, I don't necessarily want a metallic. A brown is probably too dark. I don't really want orange. Why do I keep reaching for orange? Um, 
Okay, I know it's way off piste, but let's see what this one does. So this is just, what's this called? Dark turquoise. I quite like dark turquoise, so it might be a good or it might be a bad choice. I'm going to go directly onto my mat this time because I want not a, not a hugely thick, but I want, want a decent amount on my jelly plate. I'm probably going to have to add more than this. I don't think this is enough. No, nope, that's not enough. I'll make sure there's a coating enough so I can pull off the jelly print and still leave stuff behind. So, um, you can jelly print with several different mediums, by the way. I've always used acrylic paints. I'm sure you can do it with watercolors. I'm sure you can do it with inks as well. Um, I just haven't, so I don't know. I always work with acrylics when it comes to my jelly plate because I like the results I get from it. So let's just put that down there, wipe that off there. Right, so what you do is you take your bit of wallpaper. I've cut this to a, just a bit beyond a 12 by 12. And you run your hand over the back. Now, if you press too hard, it's likely to slide around. So you basically don't want that. So lift this off. And then look what happens, you get all of that. I don't mind this, this adds another layer to this. Right, that's an interesting back. Um, I'm wondering whether I want to put that directly on there. I don't want to put it on there. I think I want to put, I want to create another tissue sheet at the moment. Where do I put the tissue? Right, I'm just going to pull in the bit we had before, because to me, I think I added too much paint on there. As I said, it's a learning curve for all of us. Um, I don't mind the creases in the tissue. Um, if you've ever tried to smooth tissue out completely on a jelly plate, you'll understand why. Just want to get that on there and lift some of this off. I'm hoping it's going to leave some of... There you go, some left de details there. Okay, I didn't get exactly the effect I wanted, but I think the problem was I used too much. But learning curve. Let's put that one down there. I don't mind what's on there at the moment, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to pull it off, as in the print, but I'm going to give it a go. Just to add another layer of texture behind this. Ooh, loving that. Okay, that's, that's it. It almost looks like cracked paint. Okay, loving that. Let's put that to one side. I want to redo that technique with wallpaper, because I think it'll work. I think I put too much paint on here. So I'm gonna pull in this one. Um, as I said, I'm sure it didn't work because of me. So yellow, let's see if there's any purple here. I'm feeling purple at the moment. Not literally, but I'm feeling purple. Right. So not too much this time. I, as I said, I think that was my problem. I put too much paint on my jelly plate and the wallpaper slid around. Now, as I'm using the same bit of wallpaper, um, some of the teal paint or turquoise paint that was on there may not yet be fully dried. So therefore I might get a bit of the color from there as well. So let's take that same bit of wallpaper Put that down. I'm hoping to not move it around because I think if you move it around, you're going to smudge the image. And that's not my intent. There you go. That's a lot better. That was what I was looking for. Getting, getting that amount of detail down. So now I can leave that sit for a few minutes just to um, dry out a bit because if I use it too soon, I'm going to smudge it. I'm going, however, to try this. Normally I would leave that set, but if I do this, I might end up with a ghost print from this. It'll be equally as interesting. So just line my paper up, give it a gentle rub. But this is all about building those layers. On. I'm not giving it a load of hard pressure at this point, guys. I'm just putting bits and pieces. Okay, I got texture. 
I definitely got texture. I've got pattern on there. Um, this colour looks a bit flat. I think I need something with a bit more punch in it when it comes to the final layers. So let's have a look at something else we can do now. Um, I actually, where's the blue? That one will work. Um, I actually went online last week and managed to buy a set of wood blocks. Um, these, um, they were just on eBay. I looked for um, wood block printing. I think I might have searched carved wood blocks as well. And these were really intriguing and I absolutely love these. So not used them before, as you can see, not been used by me. And I thought I'd really like to add something to one of these. Um, and see what I can do with it. So let's have a look. That one's a bit. Right. I'm going to pull this in. Now I think I want to use black. Not normally a colour I use a lot of because when I use black, basically it's hard to unuse black if that makes sense. I'm going to put it onto my smaller plate because I'm going to use this as an ink pad, push those into it, and then stamp onto here. Well, that's my intent anyway. So now I won't actually know whether it's worked until I put another print on it. Let's just stamp that off. Now I could have put this directly onto the painted stuff on there and I'd be sub subtracting from the image as it were because every time you stamp you're lifting the paint away from, well, from the source plate, as I want to call it. I'll dab around there, just get one more. Now, I actually can't even see where I put this on here, but I need to, I need to believe that I put it on there because we know I've put it on there. I've seen it. Right, so that's been on there a while. Now, I know it's probably not going to be fully dried, okay? Normally, you let it fully dry. Now, if you're someone who goes, oh, I just used my heat tool on this, Please don't need a heat tool. You'll probably destroy your jelly mat. I think maybe you could get away with like the hairdryer maybe. And, and I would avoid using the Tim Holtz heat diffuser one because that's probably going to be too strong as well. So I'm just going to give this a bit of this orangey yellow colour. Oh, lose that voice, Griffiths. Now it may make my colour muddy because I'm doing it on here. But we'll see. If it's too muddy, I'll just clean the plate off totally. No, I think I can live with that. So I just want to put a layer of this on here so I can lift those mandala shapes off here. Mandala? Mandala? I never know how to pronounce that word. There's a few words in the English language that befuddle me. Right, let's see how this worked. I'm hoping it worked beautifully. So, pop that down there. Now I'm hoping this will lift the black underneath and give me something really beautiful on here. As I said again, I've not done this before, so you're on the journey with me, guys. You're on the journey with me. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not upset by that. Okay. Interesting thing about this is the one that was dry came out perfectly. The one I did last smudged. So they look like snowflakes. I'm okay with that. So I need to remember that if I'm doing that in the future, um, let them dry totally. But what I am going to do is there's paint on this plate. I'm actually just going to add a few more on here. I can see them this time. Just as a border down the side. Just for the next thing I print. Now, when I make my 12 by 12s, they very rarely stay as 12 by 12s purely because what I intend them to do is I like doing a 12 by 12 because then if I cut from it I don't necessarily have to deal with any edges. Um, here I'm normally using um, a 9 by 12 is normally what I would start my journal covers from. So I mean I can then obviously cut pieces off. Right that's looking very muddy I'm going to give it a bit of a clean off while this is drying. So I'm just using a damp cloth. I try to use one that's not going to leave fibres. Um, so I don't tend to use like a paper towel 
because that's got fibers in that may get left on there. And likewise with my brayer, I can just wipe it down and it'll just take it back to normal. The roller does clip out of this. So I do that occasionally as well. Right, that one needs to go by there because I think that one's done. So right, I've got that on that side. What else do I want to do? Um, I've got an idea. I think I want to just start with a new piece of paper, to be honest. Actually, no, why don't we use the use a clean-up sheet? Sorry, under the table, All right? Here's a clean-up sheet. So I'm just I want to pull that up, but I want something over here too. And I've got I've got a hint of an idea. Bear with me on this one. OK, this is a new idea for me. So um, I've got a bit of this sort of terracotta type colour. I'm just going to bray that. Don't put it on top of paper, Griffiths. I'm going to put this onto my mat or my other jelly mat. Now, I found an MDF window, which I like the idea of. And I'm just going to press that in there as if it was a rubber stamp, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get it onto there. There's no reason why this shouldn't work, but there's no reason why it should work either. So I'm just going to let that sit on there a second, rebrayer this, because I'm going to try and put another window in here if I can. Okay, it's faint, but I'm okay with that. I don't mind faint. Maybe because the MDF I'm using is absorbent, then it soaks up the paint. However, after a couple of uses, it will no longer soak it up because there'll be a layer of paint. OK, I'm OK with that. Right, that can go to one side. This looks interesting. I wonder whether I can pull that off there. Let's see if I can find one of these wipe up ones. That might do. Right, let's see if I can just... If there's one thing about jelly printing, it's very much the realm of the squirrel. And by realm of the squirrel, what I mean is I will go, oh, look, I can do that. Oh, I, can, I get sidetracked a lot. So, OK, interesting. Something I need to know about for the future. That's OK. I don't mind that. I will use that in a moment. Actually, I wonder if I can just pull that off onto a piece of the other stuff. Oh, I came off nicely. OK, but it cleaned my print lovely. OK, I've been letting this sit for a while. Um, I want to wipe this off because I don't want that colour on the next thing I do. Right. So I'm thinking I'd quite like to have something quite light behind this one. And I'm looking at this colour because I like that colour a lot. <laughs> Not that I have to like that colour. But I like that colour a lot, so I'm going to put that on there. Now, I know it's a white piece of paper, so I'm going to pull in. This is another one of those mix-up tubes that I've got, or bottles. I've just put stuff into it. Right, now remember, I need a thin coating on here to be able to lift this. So, hopefully now, everything on here had enough time to dry. And I'm hoping also that by blending these there, I'm going to have an interesting effect on the plate. I'm not looking for an equal blend across. I'm just looking for patches of colour. I'll really quickly put one of those onto my labels. Sorry, I wish I had a big enough surface that I could show you everything I'm doing, guys. It's a bit of a struggle. I've only got a tabletop. OK, let's see what this produces, shall we? As I said, experimentation. That's what we're doing, experimentation. Lift this in such a way as I don't get a crease. As I said, that's a problem with using thinner papers. They sometimes have a crease going down them. OK, I'm not upset by that. That's interesting. So I've used 
the wood blocks to stamp across onto that and I've used that MDF piece. There needs to be more on that. All of these need something more anyway. Right, so now we've ended up with six. Okay, I think we need to start working on where do I take stuff from here. So I'm going to take this jelly plate, that's my palette, and I'm going to just pop it on here just to pull stuff off. Now what this will do, because it traps air bubbles, it'll give me an interesting effect on there, plus help me clean up the jelly plate a bit. I've been trying to think who to recommend that you watch, and it's unfair because I know so many different artists that I like watching jelly plate, and each of them has something different to offer. It's, it's hard. I mean, I can't list everybody because if I do that, I'll end up with a list in the description box a mile long. Right. So looking at my time, I've got about seven or eight minutes left and I do want to start really finishing some of these off. Now, one of the things that you really need to be aware of is um, contrasting colours really add drama to your pieces. So, right, let's use this as an example, right? I have this colour here. I think I want to use this colour on it. So I need a bit of a thoughtful moment to think out what I want to put on it at the moment. So I'm not a million miles away, guys. I'm just, I'm just thinking. Right, um, I'm going to use this. This, and I will show you in another video how I make these. But these are like, I call them mark-making tools. And I'm going to use that on there. So... This time I'm going to put it directly on here. I was watching a video the other day um, about how to use leaves and plant life in this. And I'm really excited. I nearly did that one straight away today because that's really, I found that very exciting. It's almost like doing mono print eco papers. So right, I've done that. I'm going to come in with my mark making tool. Just press it down and what this will do is lift, lift this away and lifting it away will then leave in the background. If I had enough room I'd be able to do this. It will leave behind patches. I'm just going to stick this on top of my labels to see what I can any ghost print from that. A little bit of a ghost print, just a touch in the background. So now I'm going to come in with my piece that I've been working on. And as this has had a few seconds drying, I don't expect all of this to lift off. But I don't mind that. That's sort of kind of what I'm looking for. I don't want huge patches. I could just dab the page down in areas to lift stuff. So, Okay, I like that. That's turning out lovely. I, I have other things to go on here. But you can see by the whole layering thing, this is coming together beautifully. There's not a lot on there, so I'm going to let that one be. Right, let's have a look at this one. Right, we really did start go down the crackle paint look of this one. Um, I'm still thinking it's a little bit more vibrant than I truly, truly want. So I'm wondering... I want to use this one again. And I think I want to use... What colours have I got on there? I think I want to use something really light Let's put this out of the way, um, to give it almost a frosted look. So we're going to go with white. Let's, let's just see what white does for me. But not a huge amount. As I've already learned, um, it's not a good idea to put a huge amount on when you do this wallpaper technique. This will also clean everything off the plate that's on here beforehand. So let's lay this down gently. Gently press it, which is what I learned last time. See, you're always learning. That's what I like about life, to be honest. You're always learning something new. All right, let's lift that up. Okay, that's fabulous. Now, the question is, if I take this in its entirety, this page is going to kind of turn white. What I think I want to do is pull areas of it off. And what I'm going to do is just lay my paper down and pull bits out, as you can see, like that. I like that. Right. 
And actually looking at that, I quite like the idea of putting some on this one, which is the one we did with the diamonds. See that? That's interesting down the side of that. I might... This is the one that I think is going a bit dark. Just pull pieces of this off. See, it's getting more interesting now. When you're doing jelly plate work, don't ever judge your finished piece until it's absolutely finished. Don't give up on it halfway through. Things change. <clears throat> right, I'm going to get that bit of tissue paper we've been playing with and see if I can just pull one good ghost print off this. And then we'll move on to the next one. Tissue paper is a lot more resilient than you give it credit for, guys. Okay, I pulled off some of that, but that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that was dry enough to do the next bit. Right. There was one bit I didn't like the look of. It was this one. Okay, this was okay, but it wasn't special. So what I'm going to do, as that's already in here, I'm going to use this again, but I'm going to change the colour of this completely to a more vibrant colour. Um, oops. Okay, we're almost there, guys. So I want something that's got a bit of punch to it. And I think I'm just going to go yellow. Just because I can. Um, yeah, let's put it directly on there. Because that colour just is a bit muddy for me. Let's put this over. Now this could be an absolute disaster or it could be absolutely brilliant. It's a case of you never never know when it comes to this. As I said we'll just round out with one more go at each of these to see whether I can change the character of it. That's just getting muddier and muddier right you're putting you to one side. <clears throat> However well I've got that on the plate I'm going to put this this orange one back down and see if I can pull something interesting off that. Okay, subtle, but liking it. Right, I'm going to grab a few stencils. Um, actually, I'm probably not going to grab a few stencils. I'm going to grab some bubble wrap first. Okay, so the orange one. I like the orange one, I like the subtle TV it. I just think I want something on here and I think I'm going to pull in this metallic colour which is Morton Violet and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this as almost an ink pad for what I want to use give that a really nice coat doesn't look very metallic to me. Maybe I just read the cover wrong. So I've got that on there and I'm going to move this up slightly because I want you to see what I do down here. So I'm going to take just bubble wrap, press it gently down onto this. Don't want to squish it too much. Lift that off and then I'm going to move this piece of paper down and transfer that across. Instant visual texture. The one I didn't like very much. Let's do another piece of this on here. Sorry if my shoulder is in the way or you probably see my ear or something. Put that down the middle of that one. Again, visual texture. I've lost, lost my jelly prints rather. Oh, I found them over there. Um, again, now I'm not going to put this back in the top bit. I'm literally going to lay this on here and get a ghost print of what was on here before. Okay, that's interesting. So, right, where am I up to? Um, I have all this ink, um, all this ink, what am I talking about? All this paint on here. It's lovely. It's still wet enough for me to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to grab a stencil. Um, let's... Let's grab this stencil and see if I can come in and where have I gone? Oh, there it is. 
Right, get this one that I thought was really, really bright. That's interesting. Um, yes, let's leave that as that. Let's lift that off there, which just left all of that on there. And then pull in one that I wasn't keen on, which is this one, and lift that bit back out. Which has given me a slight layer of something there, which we're loving. Okay, I like this colour and I want to add some of it to this. So I'm just going to lay that across the top, just lift a little bit of it out, and I like the gradation of that one. And let's see if I've got another one I want to put on here. Sorry, there's just not enough room in my room. So I've got this one, which is one of my favourites. And where are we up to? I've lost one. There it is. I'm going to come in, I'm going to take this one. Now I'm not expecting this to come through because this paint has been sat here for a while and it's a really fine stencil but you know I was wrong it worked perfectly take that out of there now I've got a few patches of ink um ink I keep calling it ink you know it's not ink guys it's just me having a moment I'm going to come in with this one and see whether I can just lift that off there Yep, that made that interesting. And where's that other stencil gone? Let's grab this stencil and lay it across that bit. So you can see that if you have um, paint on there for a while, and it's a good thick paint before you start another thin watery one, you're going to find that, see if I can lift anything off that at all, um, you're going to find that you've got more working time. Um, Depends on the quality of the paint as to how long it stays actually mobile. Okay, that's getting better. Right, I really do need to do some finishing touches, guys, or we're going to be here forever. So. Right, let's take a look at this one. Um, come on. I quite like this. It needs a pop. And I don't use the word pop very often. I think it needs black. Um, so let's grab a little bit of black. Think black? I do think black, right. We're going to do black on here. And I'm going to do that Mandela stamping thing because I think that's what that needs in that corner. And hopefully I don't stick it to this mat here. So I'm just going to come in. And I'm quite liking the fact that I've used a little bit of paint so that it's not overly um, perfect because, as I said, I'm looking for visual layers. So that's that one done. Now, do I think that's completely finished? I'm not sure. I need to think about that and see how I feel about that in a few days, to be honest. Okay, on to the next one. Where's the next one? Right, this one was interesting. Um, it needs something. And I'm wondering whether it just needs a bit of grunge on it. And all I'm just doing, guys, is just cleaning the brayer off onto the piece. Just to give it a bit of grunge. And I think I would like a pop of colour onto that one. And I'm thinking maybe lime green. Okay, go with me on this. We're just flying by the seat of our pants at the moment. Just trying to make. Now, just because I've got a large jelly plate, doesn't mean I have to use the whole plate. I'm just going to use the middle of the plate this time to do the next bit. So let's pull in the stencil. I quite like this one. It's a bit Moroccan, should we call it? So I'm going to come in. I'm going to lift out part of this pattern on here. 
Now, as I said, with the thicker papers or things that are on those card, it's not going to sink down very much, but you will get details. So there you go, that's another one. Let's lift that off of there. Now that's really interesting, so I'm going to pull that in to this one, which I thought is ugly all the way along. Or unfortunate, should we say. Let's not call anything ugly, that's very unkind of me. Right, let's pull a little bit of that into that. Okay, I think that needs something, but I'm going to call it done. We'll have a look at them when they're all done in a moment, guys. Right, let's pull in... Can't reach it. This one, because this one definitely needs something. And I think I just want to see whether I can clean up what's on the jelly plate a little bit. Right, gave me something. Um, I think on this one I'd like some gold. Or gold or bronze or something. And I think as it's green on there already, it's going to work quite well. Bronze, is this bronze? It is bronze. It's a good memory, Griffiths. So I'm just going to come in. Now my intent here is just to pick up patches of the colour. I'm not intending on doing a full page pull. I'm not going to use a stencil. I just want areas of this coloured. So I'm going to come in. See, just pull enough to actually just give myself a little bit of interest when I see it in the light. Right down there. So, and as it's almost the same colour, we've got a nice reflection. I'm going to leave that to one side because I think that needs something else. This one, oh no, let's put it on this one. Right, I'm going to do the rest of this as a pull on our cleanup sheet. That's give me a, oh, that's interesting in the middle. Right, I think we need to pull, that was a cleanup sheet, so I'm not overly bothered by that. Let's see if I can get any gold onto some of these labels. I don't normally put my labels onto a jelly plate because sometimes when you lift them up, the labels come undone. Hopefully that won't happen. There it is, it happened. Okay, well, that's good anyway, because I can just show you what I would do. I would literally just come in and pull the labels back off again and you'll get all the little bits of colour in it. So I think that's probably going to mark time on this anyway, but that's, that's the reason why I don't do that on here. So this was the first one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, well, let's take that out of the way so I can actually do that in a moment when I'm off screen. So let's take a look at what we've created. Now, as I said, a lot of these are probably not, not fully finished yet. I will add them to my must be completed pile. But I do think we've created some interesting stuff. Okay, I've got this interesting bit of... I wonder if I can take some of that off on there. There's just no stopping you guys. Try to get as much off as I can. I don't want to waste anything. There you go. So that's an interesting piece. I can just tear it up and use it as texture in a collage. I like that sort of stuff. I've got this one, which is, it's interesting. I can't say it's a favorite. It's interesting. It does need more work. This one I'm okay about actually. I think that I would probably go in and maybe stamp some text on that one just to bring it to the fore. I ended up really liking this one. Um, it was just cute. Like if this was a travel journal cover and that was on there or that was on there, it's equally as good. But we'll work on that one. This one I'm still not happy with. There's something about this one. You get to the point where you make mud and sometimes when you make mud, you have to just cover the whole thing in a light colour and start again. Actually, I might, might make that the start of the next video, just so you can see how I would rescue that. That one I quite liked. I'd like maybe to have put a little bit of black on that. But again, I'm okay with that. And I particularly like that down there. This was the last one we just did. And I like the gold on that. Um, that'd be great for an autumn journal. So I think, guys, that's where I'm going to call this done. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, my craft room now looks like a complete and utter mess. Oh, forgot to show you something. Uh, where are they? Okay, these are two of the label sheets as they stand. The other one, as you saw, I just got all unstuck on stuff, but we'll work on that later. Um, so until next time, it's goodbye from me. Hopefully this is what you expected. As I said, it's just me having a go, trying to share your hints and tips and create backgrounds. Each, each month will be slightly different. Each month we'll have more successes or less successes. So 
Enjoy it, and I'll see you around. Take care now. Bye-bye.